पॉलिसी बाजार पर एक करोड़ रुपए का टर्म लाइफ इंश्योरेंस केवल चार सौ पचास रूपए महीने ऐसी शुरू Joining us first on the program tonight is Mr. Rajiv Kumar, uh, the former Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog. Mr. Kumar, great to have you with us, and a very happy New Year to you, first of all. My first happy question. Happy New Year to you, Nidhi. Thank, you, thank you very you much. Yeah. Uh, my first question really is on you know the verdict itself. I mean, it's it's kind of surreal. It's been more than six years. Uh, in a way, uh, do you think this was an academic exercise? I think entirely it was an academic exercise. Six years after the event. Uh, and you know, and the fact that this cannot be undone, uh, there is no, uh, there is no recourse, as as it were. What's happened has happened. I think this was more, um, uh, this was more an exercise in saying whether the government was, uh, you know, the legitimacy, the government's legitimacy, legality, etc. And uh, you know, no, the economic impact of whatever it ha has happened has happened. So, uh, and I think to that extent, um, I would think of it as an academic exercise. uh you know and uh, the only thing they could have done is to say whether the processes required were followed and there it seems they were followed uh, from the majority majority judgment at least and uh, i also don't agree with the dissenting judgment uh, you know of uh, um, um, justice nagaratna uh, that this was unlawful and it should have been done through the parliament and act like that cannot be done through the parliament i mean the whole the purpose the point of that act right or wrong we can discuss later is the element of surprise so you can't do it through an act of parliament so i'm i'm i think uh, you know these are these are uh, uh, you know these are opinions which really one don't matter and two i think uh, uh, should have been considered before before being passed but uh, let me ask you in terms of the actual impact of demonetization it has been much debated and much discussed now for six more than six years in terms of its stated goals one of them was for example eliminating fake currency now the rbi's own data shows today that counterfeit currency fake currency has actually increased in 2022 uh, as opposed to back in 2016 and all that data is coming up on our screens as we speak the other objective was to bring black money you know back in, in into the white fold that didn't happen because not more than 99% of the currency as you know that was demonetized was actually returned so uh, black money isn't necessarily actually cash that's sitting under people's beds uh, and then on the issue of digitizing the economy the the data has mixed because digitized jason has definitely gone up but today we have much more cash circulating in the system almost double from 2016 as per the rbi's own data so in other words do you think that the primary objectives of demonetization were actually achieved you know that's a that's a great question and also i think the outcomes are, are, are quite mixed uh, because given the nature of our economy given the nature of the unorganized sector in the economy given that large segments of the economy still run on cash including very large sectors like uh, like the construction etc uh, you know the the attempt at uh, Uh, weeding out and completely sort of you know uh, weeding out the cash economy or the black money etc i don't think uh, would could have been achieved but i think the greatest success that it is uh, it has done is in the digitization I mean, today if you see the latest uh, numbers that have come out is that under the upi uh, 7.82 billion transactions in the month of december uh, above 10 trillion rupees 10 lakh crore rupees you know so i think that that whole fintech digitization uh, thing uh, you know at has got a huge fillip on this one now about the fake currency in any case the, the numbers are so minor they're so small you know uh, 10 20 crore you know uh, and so on it doesn't really matter but the big one which i for which i had supported you know, the demonetization when it took place was my hope uh, that it will lead it will result in Uh, you know, in, in a more, uh, in a less uh, cash-oriented economy, and that I'm afraid hasn't happened because I think the way the exercise was undertaken at that time, and you know, and and and, and given the sort of the modalities of it, you know, that that objective uh, is not been achieved, and I doubt if it could be achieved the way. you know it's been fact, done it is a much larger sure. uh, you know but 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 from what you're saying change. mr rajiv kumar i mean it, doesn't that actually prove that uh, perhaps we were on our way to becoming a more digitized economy anyway 
uh, and it wasn't as a byproduct of demonetization because the, the the cash component has clearly gone up. We have more cash circulating today, far more than we did back then. But so but has digitization. So was that happening irrespective? Nidhi, if you look at the, I'm not sure of the figures, but I think if you look at cash as a percentage of total of GDP, then that percentage I think has declined. You know, it was much higher. And I think, you know, in terms of total volume of cash, yes, of course. But I mean, please remember. Uh, that the cash has doubled, but also the GDP has grown at the same time in nominal terms. And therefore, uh, you know, that was, we are still much higher than some of the organized developed economies Se in terms of currency cash. Currency notes in GDP circulation today are 72% higher than they were in November of 2016 when demonetization was announced. So that's in, quite in a big, terms, big number. I'm not sure how high the uh, GDP As has been. But, uh, not but, very. But, you know, yeah, but, but you know, the, the fact is that digitization can be linked to that one act. You know, because there was there was a incentive, there was a great fillip uh, given to uh, digitization because people were looking for those alternatives. And I think this is one trend which, if it continues, and where, by the way, India today leads, even countries like China and is multiple times that of the U.S., we will see a massive impact on the economic activity in the country and in the in converting the unorganized sector to the organized sector. So that's but, um, that, that, that's my view, I think. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me though come back to you on, on, on the today's judgment and, and what you said on the dissenting judgment where you said you disagreed that it should have been done through parliament. There are many experts who agree with you on that, who say there needs to be an element of surprise in demonetization. I think though uh, what the dissenting judge was also making a point about was, was the RBI itself. Uh, that in a sense, you know, what was the RBI board doing? Was the RBI just, you know, in a sense, ticking off boxes and, and going along with whatever the government was advising them to do? Is there a bigger lesson here about institutional independence and the long-term consequences uh, of, of a decision being taken in this way? Yeah, you, you know, Nidhi, uh, the charge is that there is no application of mind by the RBI board. And, you know, because as soon as the government in some sense made a formal request to the RBI, the board concurred and said yes. But please remember that this discussion with the RBI and the central government had been going on for six months. So I think, you know, that whole application in mind is not just after the formal request, but is the whole process of that's going on. Having said that, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the autonomy of the central bank that you talk about is extremely important and has to be preserved and conserved. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure whether this judgment or this particular act has eroded that autonomy. There are several other aspects of it which should be taken into consideration. And there is this, you know, the, a little bit of tension between you know, the fiscal and the monetary policy, etc. But uh, my own view of the matter is that RBI, under the governor that were at that time, was duly consulted. Uh, and the formal concurrence came soon after, but doesn't show that there was a lack of application of mind in this regard. So finally, but the autonomy is important and should be maintained and preserved. Finally, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, as, as, as you said very you know, frankly, uh, you, you believe that the uh, uh, goals of demonetization, ultimately, it, it was a mixed bag, how it all turned out. So yeah. in the end, was it worth it? Oh, well, um, six years later, I'm not so sure of it. I was convinced that it was worth it when it was undertaken. But the way things have turned out, uh, but let me say that the 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 the, the Philip that it has given to digitization and to the growth of the fintech industry and to the fact that it is now you've got huge, much bigger financial inclusion in the economy, etc. Uh, I won't maybe repeat it, but I think when it was done, uh, it was done uh, with the, the the purpose that it was done have been largely achieved. All right, uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, thank you very much for being very forthright with your views on that today. Uh, the former vice chairman of the Niti Aayog there talking about uh, demonetization.